Now today we worked on the wheels for the GS1100E. We had a lot of surprises today. Well, we did not expect our tires to be delivered in the middle of the snowstorm. <laughs> they got delivered. We did a little test fit to see if the brake discs were interchangeable. Looks like they are a perfect change. Thank you, Dallas. We got our wheel totally dried overnight, sitting up by a heating vent. Got to pull off the stripe see how it looked in real life and if the color matched then it was a really good match i had karen come down and verify the match and she thought that the match was pretty good in fact she thought it was perfect but then we got to see it out in the sunlight with clear on it now i really wanted this day to play out that i could get some clear shot because it was an unpredictable weather day they said snow or rain is coming well and they were right <laughs> the weatherman was right for a the rarest of rare things. So what I did is I used the opportunity to get a gun clean. I took a gun that had never had anything in it but clear, made a little test batch of Joe's relatively expensive Colorite paint, and then in the middle of that, Miles came over. And we had a great visit. And he hung out, and we had pizza pie. And uh, But unfortunately, the rain never stopped, and it just carried on. But I was in the middle of mixing paint, and I wanted to get that a little test done for Joe so I could report into him how that paint matched. Because once that paint matched, we can move on with the next part of the job. I wasn't sure it would match. Well, I'm going to leave it for you to see in the video how that all played out. It never really stopped raining. We made a little test patch that <laughs> needed several coats. I had to use the back room to do the painting. And that worked out fine. But the final match, when Karen came down and said it's a go... I was really happy with that. I was extremely happy and we can move on. Well, I couldn't be happier with the way this wheel is turning out. Wow. Did that, did that ever dry up nicely? Wow. I can't believe it. But again, the problem is this time of year, we are prisoners of the weather. I don't know how this day is going to play out because when they predict there's no snow, two thirds of the time it snows. And when they say there's no chance of snow, you get the picture, I'm sure. Anyway, we're at the mercy of the weather. That's the whole thing. But I am expecting some deliveries today. I hope some of the parts for this job are going to come on board. And of course, the biggest thing of all, I'll be able to take the orange tape off. And if it is the weather's appropriate, get the first coats of clear on. And we'll really start to see that wheel pop. This is what I didn't expect to come today. The tires are here already for this project. And considering how much snow and bad weather we've had, I, I thought this might take a lot longer, but we do have the tires in-house now. One thing really nice about Rutherford, we must be the first stop on the, the delivery list. I don't know. We're going to find out. I would assume this is one of or both of the tires for the project we're working on. And I guessed right. It's both tires. Wow. This is good. This is what I like to see. Brand, brand new Michelin tires. Oh man, am I happy about this. These puppies are ready when we get to do the front wheel. Now obviously, let's see what the date is. Let's see if we got... Oh my God. Wow. They're not even two months old. Nice and fresh. They even smell nice. That's the rear tire I really want to see. I have a nice cardboard box for Miles to play with whenever I get a tire. First thing I want to do is check out, this tire was made on the 29th, 29th week of 2020. It's, that's pretty good. It's not even six months old. And in, in about a week, it'll be on the bike mounted and balanced. Now we did find out over the, over the course of the last uh, tire changes, by doing some research, Michelin tires do not have the orange balancing dot because they reject any tire that's that's out of balance by a certain amount now I'm skeptical about everything maybe that's true maybe it isn't but but I have had really good luck with Michelin tires I don't I don't ever want to compromise the tires and I'm trying not to ever get into that habit of trying to get one more ride one more ride yeah I, good tires when you're gonna ride aggressively good tires are the best investment in the world they're like vegetables are when you get old. They're just a good investment. 
Now, I didn't know if people really knew this. Uh, some people maybe knew, don't, don't know it, but we've been sharing information. This is information that if you're buying a tire, this is telling you what week and what year. The 29th week of the year 2020. And so what would happen if you were to go buy a tire and you're, you're at the dealer on a shelf and there's six tires there, pick out the one that's the newest. Don't, don't take one that's a couple of years old. And that is, that's good information. And it was, it was like pulling teeth to find out the information about the red dot that's on some of the, the, the tires that we've mounted. And, you know, to be honest, I don't know how true that is, but it seems to work pretty well. Most of the Michelin tires balance up pretty well. And what I've done from in the past, I've taken the wheel, because here's what's happened, and Glenn and I found this out. When we replaced a steel um, valve, the steel valve, and put an aluminum one in here, we would go to balance the tire, and it would need a lead weight right here. Yeah, you know, I think they account for that on some motorcycles. I don't know all, but I don't know. But I do know one thing. The, most of the Michelin tires balance up pretty well, and most of these wheels, when I've put the Curvy Girl in and then seen how they balance, they really are pretty close. We're always within 10 grams, hopefully. Hopefully, that's a big word. <laughs> so on this project, maybe as a free bonus, we're going to be able to use the, uh, let me get rid of that, use the lighter disc. And boy, when you, when you pick these up at the same time, you, you think you're picking up you know, an elephant and a giraffe. This is a lot lighter. So, and again, thank you, Dallas, for that tip. That's a, That really is a good tip. And I hope Joe, you know, if Joe, by the way, Joe Padula, because he has exactly the same bike, if he needs an extra front disc, I have plenty. I have three sets of discs for this bike. So there's no real secret. We're going to have some tires to mount very soon. And we'll, of course... That's, that's one of the things I really enjoy, because I know anytime I wear out a tire, I've had some good rides on a motorcycle. What, what's worse is to look at a bike with tires that are 10 years old and they're not even worn out. I, then I know you didn't, get, you didn't have much fun with it. But I love wearing tires out. Oh, we'll get all our battery chargers flipped here and get back into the house as soon as possible. And in this weather, that usually is about two minutes of battery for the lithium ions. And boy, I'm thinking about something here. I'm already thinking, this is the only bike I have here that doesn't have custom wheels yet. And I can't wait to see the first time we get that wheel on the bike. It's going to change the whole look of the bike, I think. And my saying is always, nothing changes the look of a bike quicker than custom wheels or paintwork or both. And we have both on almost every bike here. And when those wheels are hand buffed, <laughs> does that make the maintenance a lot easier? Makes it so much easier to maintain the bike. And having a spare set of wheels, one of the best investments, I think the best investment you can have. The only thing better is to have a whole spare parts bike. <laughs> and we have both. Oh, but we do love evil twinning these bike out, and I'm, I'm so happy Luciano's getting into it too with his H1. Evil twins, so much fun. Time to get inside and have coffee. And this is the best way I know of get that day started off, no matter what the weatherman holds in store for us. All right, it's time to go to work. Ah, uh, it's a thing of beauty. I take the tape off I want to just make sure even though this has been under a heating vent I want the tape to be warm it just it makes it a better chance that I'm gonna have a nice crisp edge I've been sitting up there a whole day oh and I can see already I like the way that orange stripe looks wow it's gonna look good it looks like we got a really nice edge work in here, so that's in our favor. And the weather, I don't know if it's going to play out. We're going to get the clear on today. I have no idea. We're taking it hour by hour. This time of year, everything, everything is an adventure. Hey, I, that, 
that surprisingly looks really good. I'm really impressed. Let me get a clean paper towel and just just wipe the edge. Oh, the edge is perfect. Well, the first side came off perfect. I hope this is going to be the same. And that'll get us ready for the clear. If we can just get the weather to cooperate. And I never trust the weatherman, boy. I have learned learned it the hard way. Yeah, this is coming off real nice. I'm happy the way this is playing out. And I think we got the color right on the money. Now, this is a color that's going to get a lot brighter. Once you put the clear on it, that, the color is going to be a lot brighter. Just some useful information. If we were doing a, a model right now, I'd be thinking this might be appropriate. We would take a, a, a credit card and just knock that edge down. Now, because we're painting black, and the black cover is so good, this edge is almost, almost non-existent. If we were painting the wheel a lighter color over a dark, this edge would be a lot higher. Anybody that's a modeler knows all about dealing with that. And we just take the credit card and kind of shave that. The one thing to never do is sand that edge. Once you sand that edge, what happens, as soon as the thinner sees that, sometimes it's not that happy. But I'm looking for any spot I might have missed. I don't, I don't think I missed anything here. I think this is just about as, Jesus, as good as it gets. But, of course, we're going to find out once we get the clear on. But the clear is going to make that stripe a lot brighter and show us, give us an idea what this is going to look like when it's ready to put, up, put the tire on and put it on the motorcycle. I'm just looking at it from this angle because I want to see how much of that area down there you actually see. And you do see some of it, so I'm going to make sure I get plenty of clear down in there. When we do the clear, yeah, that's going to be... That actually exceeded what I thought it would look like. I thought this this would not be that nice. That's a really nice, because I know that's a perfect match to the decal on the tank. So, And this little thing with Dallas, that just that's just like a cherry on a Sunday. And again, thank you, Dallas. New tin foil on this a few times, trying to keep the keep the thing, especially the clear is the stickiest and hardest to get off if you if you get any kind of paint buildup there. And before we do a wheel balance, because I'll want that to be tighter into the hub, we'll definitely clean these parts up on a wire wheel, and that makes that just a little bit nicer. And the tin foil. Since I've been using it, and, and thank you to the late Walt Prey for sharing that technology in painting and basically in everything, to have it as a usable tool. Now the real trick is going to be when we actually go to put the clear on this and to get it in all of these little nooks and crannies and down there and uh, just it because you see as, as I'm going to try to show this even though it doesn't have any clear on it and It's relatively flat You see how the light reflects off of that now it reflects off of that It's like a diamond as those spokes come in into the Sun And if you're if you're looking at a motorcycle the wheel doesn't even have to turn because you move and you see the light Reflecting off that so that's part of the reason a wheel like this to me is a beautiful thing It's a lot of work to do it, but when you're done it really it it's really going to be a unique thing, I think. Now what I'm doing, I'm going to take one of the guns I have, and I have three or four, like four altogether, that have never had anything in them except clear. They've never had any color paint in them. I have one for almost every color, big guns and small guns. But what I want to do with this, I want to show this up close. This has never had anything but clear in it. There's eight little holes there. And what I'll do is, even though this, is, this has been flushed and cleaned the last time, I used it just before I put this together to test or do anything. I want to put, make sure this has got 
none of those little holes you can almost can't see them now like for pilot jet holes what I found is if you just put it in acetone for two or three minutes take it out put it back on and blow some air through it all those little eight little passageways get cleaned out and you get a much nicer spray pattern and I think you can see what I've got I have one of these for clear and one for everything else and I can take the one in there that's for the other clear gun and this one now what I'm going to do with this one I'm going to set up one gun for clear but the other clear gun I'm going to use to test Joe's paint now because that paint is so expensive I don't want to take a chance putting it in a red gun and it'll contaminate it in somehow. In fact, if I have to, I'll go buy a brand new gun. So there's no chance that that Colorite paint is contaminated with, with the orange paint we're using or whatever. But now just by letting it sit in that jar for about two minutes, those holes will be perfectly clear. It's one of the really good tips I learned over many, many years. Apart, these little holes are so small that when one of them clogs up, especially with clear, and the only way you can really look, i got to look up to a light bulb and see if they're clear. Once they're clear, I can just put it on the gun, and we're good to go. I'm ready to test. I think these inexpensive, these are from Harbor Freight, of course, they have a, a little filter down inside that clogs up from time to time. You've got to reach in and pull it out. What I found especially with the clear, the four to one mixes. No matter what I do, at the end of it, I've got to run a quart of acetone through here, take the tip off, leave it in a jar like this. And what it does, it just prolongs the life of the gun. Now, I, I know people in professional body shop people, they take the whole gun apart at the end of it because the guns are hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands. But these guns are so cheap that my, always, my answer is, rather than spend all that money on acetone, <laughs> just buy another gun and I've done that too that's why I wound up with all these guns and the guns last for my purposes they last plenty long if I were running a body shop I'd want an expensive DeVilvis or something better but these guns and they're, they're typically $14 these guns they serve my purposes well and and believe me I've got a lot all those motorcycles you see in a garage were painted with Harbor Freight guns now as I mentioned before this is very expensive paint and it's supposed to be an exact match, it says. It definitely will match Ducati Red. Well, we're going to find out. <laughs> and you can read the instructions, of course. It's basically, uh, you know, paint that they use to paint cars. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so I'm looking at all this, and I'm looking if there's anything special I need to know. But there's always, always a really good idea. And I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do it right now, because we got some family stuff i got to take care of first. But when I get back, I'm going to take some of these, mix up a little jar, a small amount, a couple ounces, put it in a jar, and go outside and spray a light bulb or spray, spray a bottle top or something. Because if there's anything that doesn't match, there's no point moving any further forward. So I'll be able to, just like we matched the Suzuki Orange, the wheel band, this now is going to be time consuming. This is not, you know, paste, cut and, what do they call it, paste and play or whatever, plug and play. This, this is going to require a little time. Now, before I leave here, I want to share a real quick story. I just noticed this is, and thank you, Turbo Steve, who donated a lot of these jars. This is a really true thing. I'm not kidding. I had gotten from a fellow modeler a whole bunch of kimchi jars. They're big gallon jars. That they put pickles or something and i don't know what kimchi is fish or herring or something but anyway they had it, the bowel no matter how many times i washed it even after with thinner it had a funny smell i said ah the hell with this so we went and painted a model plane i don't remember which one and six months later when you would put the plane out in the sun it did smell like that kimchi jar <laughs> it, absolutely honest to god that's a true story any of my modeling friends will know who that person is too I won't mention it on video. Anyway, right now we got to head out, but I'm going to do that test when I get back. Oh my God, we still have to deal with this. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. But it's time to go. And when do I get to play that game? Is this, is this just your exclusive game? I bet I'd be good at this. Not really. Is that fun to play? Yeah. Ah! Ah! Got blown up by a bomb. 
So today the rain really never let up. It started raining early and basically we're going to abandon hope for painting anything today. It's supposed to rain the rest of the day, but it's way better than snow. So as usually happens in my life, the unpredictable weather added another dimension of uh, uncertainty to today. But we got all our family stuff done. I was hoping that the uh, <laughs> hoping that the weather would change. I could do, go outside and do a test sample. That's not going to happen, unfortunately. But what I do want to do is I want to show what I will, and I came up with what I think is a good plan. I want to paint a light bulb or something today. So that I have this, because I can't paint today, I'll have this jar top or light bulb painted just like we did with the GS wheels. Then when I go to shoot the clear, when we get a paintable day, we'll get a, a day to shoot the, the, the clear on the black wheels. I'll be able to shoot that on the red. Then I can hold that up to the fairing that we already have painted. And if it looks like a really, really good match, or I can have Joe come over and look at it and give me the approval, then I'll paint his fairing. The thing I didn't want to do is go paint the fairing, put the clear on, and then find out it doesn't match. So I'm, I'm kind of, because we have this gap, all these giant gaps in the weather, we're going to try to make the most out of the fact that we have to work around these things. Now I know this paint is really expensive, so I'm, I'm really going to be careful about not wasting it. But of course the first thing, I'll stir it up. I want to get a real good, a real good mix on this. I'll mix up probably uh, two ounces of paint, two ounces of thinner. Usually you would start at about 50-50, maybe a little thicker on paint in the summer, a little more thinner in the winter. But we'll make a, a small batch. The whole idea of this, and I'm going to go over and look under fluorescent lights anyway right now and take a look at this and see how close this really is. Uh, just a crude look on the fluorescence, and boy, that looks really close. That's really perfect. <laughs> I hope. Anyway, we'll throw this away. We got a little test batch, and we need to find something to paint for a test. So they tell you right on the color I can to start with a 50-50 mix, but of course, shop conditions can change. But we do have a 50-50 test batch. All we need is for it to stop raining. All right, so I always like to mark, and I even put the year on this, even though we, we hope we're never going to work on this bike again. But I, I have a small test batch. Now, really not going to be able to do this right now unless it were to stop raining, because I only have about a half hour left in this work session. But, and every day is different here. There are no groundhog days. But by doing it the way I just proposed, that we make a little test, put the clear on, before I actually go over to the part and paint the part because once I paint that part I will have used up a good part of the paint and then if it's if it doesn't match I want to see it with the clear on it see, I'm very very this all of these colors these reds and yellows they change when you put the clear on but this is a gun that's <clears throat> never had anything but clear in it I've just cleaned it out this is going to be now Joe's gun this gun will not have anything but Joe's paint in it. And when we're all done, I'm going to give it to Joe. So if we, if he has to repair his bike again, I don't think so. Well, anyway, we got a decent enough test amount. And, but unfortunately, the problem, as we've had in the past, it's still raining pretty hard out there. So I have a feeling this is not going to happen today. So what I'm going to try to do, even though it's still raining out there, I'm going to try to just do it right by the open door just so I can get my test piece. So my initial test, and the first time I put a coat on this, and of course it says it right on the can. It says minimum two coats because it's a very thin color. But just looking at this, the color looks really, really close. And it's really, it might even need three coats because I want it to go over a darker color. See, if I paint, if I go over white, this red is going to get, a, will be a different color. So, because we're going over a dark primer, I wanted to see how that test would work. I'll let this dry about 10 minutes. I've got about 15 minutes left in this work session. And then what I'm going to do, put the second coat on. And hopefully uh, be happy that that's the match. But then, from this, I can put clear on this and get a real good idea of how this is going to look when I do the final paint and clear on that part.
Okay, now this is after two coats, and I wanted to get it under some bright light. That's bright, and some subdued light. Now, I can tell right away, I've done enough of this with candy apple paint and paints. This is a paint that has a small amount of pigment in it. So what it does, it makes for a deep looking color. The color looks deeper because there's more clear between the molecules. So what's going to happen on this is this definitely is going to need three coats. And what that's telling me, I hope we're going to have enough paint. We definitely have enough thinner. I hope we're going to have enough paint. But at least we have a paint coat if we do need more. And that looks, when I put it up by the part, it looks real close. And it may even look a little darker here because I know it's going to need a third coat. But it's the right color red. It's not too orangey. And just as an example, let me show you something. If you were to mix this with a little bit too much orange in it, a little bit, well, I know getting this to match the wheel was a real challenge. And once that's totally dry, it's going to change when I put the clear on it. And then I'll have, before I even invite Joe over to do a, an, an okay on it, I'll have Karen look at it and see if she, she feels that's a good match. And because she's a trained artist, she has a good eye for that kind of stuff. I think we're in good shape. I think that, well, even though it's pouring rain out there, we're still getting some progress. Okay, so that's a third coat. I've marked it up what it is. And that's probably all we're going to get done today. This was the main thing I wanted to get done today. And I feel confident that we're going to have a good match. I really feel good about it. Karen came down before and she looked, she said, well, once you put the clear on, I think it'll be perfect and I think she's right. Now, because this part, of course, already has the clear. I think that worked out great. It also, it gave me the information I need about this paint. This paint for sure is going to need at least three coats. So I think we have that in the bank. That, that really worked out well. And, and I'm, I'm very happy about that. The wheel, we're ready for clear. And if it ever stops raining, snowing, blowing it's, it's crazy here with the weather we've got all our stuff all our ducks in a row and they're all quacking so i'm real happy about the way this is working out now the only thing the only thing happier here is if we get a nice day that the sun is shining and i will wait patiently for that day to get the clear on i'd like it not to have the wind blowing too much i'd like the sun shining and no chance of rain or snow hopefully that it's coming soon and and patience is always of the essence so, I want to thank the healthcare workers. Guys, thank you so much. I cannot imagine how frustrating it must be with this terrible weather and we have these spikes and they got the schools shut by us and everything. It's, it's just horrible. Anyway, hopefully that will get better soon. Thanks in part to the work you're doing. <sighs> Guys, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that you watch the videos, that you give me the feedback. You give me the good ideas like this idea from Dallas. I, if if we never share these ideas, we're all poorer for it. And if we share them, we're all richer. And I like being rich. Anyway, thank you so much again. Thank you so much for watching. So we do try to post something up almost every day. Well, with this weather, I'm not so sure we're going to be on a no-hitter here. But anyway, we are subject to the weather, of course. But we never want to compromise the quality to work. And we try our best under some pretty battle conditions that uh, I'm not sure how, how much of a battlefront we're on here. Anyway, the most important thing is we will get this job done. Joe's job will be done and the wheels will be done before we ever ride again. And thank you so much for watching.